Welcome to Conversations at St John's Church Kiln. I'm at the wonderful wildflower and formal gardens of Dermot and Dorothy Gillespie. In a few moments, I'm going to treat you to a conversation about St John's Church Kill, County Kildare. This Christian church building is approaching its bicentenary. That's a lot of memories, stories and history. In the conversation, we have Mr Dermot Gillespie, lifelong parishioner of St John's, Miss Mabel Lyons, our oldest parishioner, 100 years young, and Dr Ian Dalton, parishioner and published historian. So let's go inside and listen to the conversation. We think this is the 200th anniversary of the building of the church. Yes. Oh. And we're sort of sitting down here, us elderly members of the congregation speak for yourself <laughs> <laughs> to see what we can remember about it and what history we can come up with and maybe a story or two about some of the people that are buried in the graveyard mm -hmm. the the church was built with by lord mayo mainly and a grant from the rcb from the board of first fruits now what ian was the board of first fruits well, it was, a, it was an outfit that was set up in the early 19th century, um, essentially to try and re-equip the Church of Ireland with serviceable uh, and, and new churches. A lot of the churches that had been acquired, shall we say, by the Church of Ireland at the Reformation were in dire straits. Um, they, they were crumbling, they were, they were not fit for purpose, all sorts of things. So essentially, <clears throat> it was part of the bargain, if you like, under the Act of Union, that, um, because the Act of Union established the Church of Ireland and the Church of England as one church in 1800. Uh, so part of the bargain was that the Church of Ireland would be looked after. So the Board of First Fruits um, was a, essentially a government department, if you like, mm. employed architects to draw up common plans that could be then adapted here and there locally. Most of them are pretty utilitarian they're not pretty you, you never call them pretty churches they don't have the uh, they don't have the character of old cathedrals or, or, or medieval churches like that like, uh, like uh, as in Leakslip for instance um, but they do the job and they were built to relatively high standards mm -hmm. and I think as far as I know Kill was 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 one of those that's right when Ernest Lyons was working away in the graveyard one of the things we discovered is that all around the church there's a whole lot of mortar that was taken off the stones of the older church that was there and uh, stones were used again. Kill was built at a time when I think there was a bit of a row in Nace and Lord Mayo had a falling out with one of the um, the, the, the lords or the rector or something yes. in Nace. Mm. He had started to build a big spire in Nace. Yes, I know mm. that story, yeah. Yeah, and uh, got it about halfway up and had uh, even put a sort of a memorial in to mm. say that this mm. spire was built with. Had the row mm. and left Nace and came to Kill. And I suspect, you know, sort of, that was why he was agreeable to Fon Kill and that is why we have a lovely spire. Mm. In, in some of the posher churches, um, they, the stabling would be provided for, for horses. Um, St Luke's Church in, in Douglas and Cork, for instance, had this. Um, and there was a charge, I think a few pence on a Sunday, would be paid to park, by your, park your horse, basically. <laughs> so you'd have a sort of a horse parking attendant, I presume, oh. going around collecting the money. So people wanted to be seen in it, mm. and pews had a had a had a market value. Mm. So there would be a pew rent. Mm. Oh. Um, uh, I doubt whether that would have been the case in Kill. Yeah, there were. Oh, were there? Oh, yeah. was there? When Kill was built, there were boxed pews. Yes. And when they did the um, the big reorganisation in eighteen seventy or whenever yeah. it was. Yes. They, um, at that stage, they put in the present pews. Hmm. Took out a gallery that was in the church. It went at that stage. Oh, was it? But was that at the back at, of the at side? The back. At the back. Right. You, if you look carefully, you can still see um, the supports and where the boards w that were supporting it went into the wall. But it came down at that stage. 
You remember when the church was a lot fuller than it is now, a bigger congregation, or has, has it always been a small one? Well, it wouldn't be very full, but it certainly would have been more than... Yeah. yeah. Mm. You were telling me that you taught Sunday school there. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what authority I had for it. I suppose I thought I could do it. And where did you do that? Did you take them up to the vestry or...? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and in there... I can't what... remember how many pupils I had, but I do remember little Violet had, had it. Yeah, yeah. Many men, one of the heavens. But, you know, we were unfortunate because we lived between the rectory and the church. So if you didn't go to church, you had a call from the rectory on the way home from church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. My be best interest was uh, the handies in chain. They did a lot for the young people, mm. like me, the girls, and they had, uh, you know, Mrs. Handy had a girl's friend. She organised things for the young girls. But, you know, another thing that uh, my family were very strict about was Sunday observance. Oh, yes. You yes. could not work, and, you know, no unnecessary work on a Sunday. Oh, no, and you couldn't knit or anything like it. That's Sunday. right. Yeah. <laughs> and as for going to a GAA game, yes. that... That was causing people to oh, work. Okay. go to a dance or anything like that. That's why they used to have Church of Ireland socials on a Friday night <laughs> rather than Saturday. Because oh, yes. they spilt over into Sunday. Oh, mm. <laughs> I didn't It also gave like you that. a day a day longer to recover from them. Roberta Hill was telling me, you know, her memory of going to church mm. was that they had to dress up, mm -hmm. they had to have their hats and their best dress oh, the hats, yeah. and little white gloves. Mm. And then they set off from Elasti to walk to church. And if they were lucky, they got a lift. And if they weren't, <laughs> they had to walk all the way there and all the way back. <laughs> no, it's unbelievable the way they've treated Sunday now. It's a working day and yeah. everywhere is open. Yeah. And it's a real working day. They don't dress up. They don't. It's no. just the same as every day. Same yeah. as every day. Yeah, well, here during the, the lockdown, you know, sort of, one day was exactly the same as another day. Yeah. Except, of course, that I used to get into my good clothes on Sunday. <laughs> and, I would, and I didn't work. And that way I knew when the start of the week was each week. Mm. <laughs> the interesting thing, I suppose, about, about Anglican churches largely is that there is usually quite a lot of interesting stuff on the inside in terms of things like memorial tablets, mm. which tell you something usually about the great and the good rather than rather than the ordinary people because they, these are the ones who have the money to put them up um, but uh, there's some very fine ones inside um, inside kill church um, big brass memorials sitting on the wall to mm -hmm. earls of clonmel countesses mm -hmm. of clonmel and and one of the more unobtrusive ones um, is to um Dermot Richard Wyndham Burke, the seventh Earl Mayo. And on it, it neatly cap captures the sort of a period around the revolutionary period, you'd call it, from, from yeah. 1912 to 1923. So here he is as a representative peer for Ireland, and he remains such until 1927 when, when he died. Um, and the member of his most uh, of his most honourable, of his majesty's most honourable privy council for Ireland, mm -hmm. and, but also of course a senator of the Irish Free State, which he, 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 he was he, both. He, yeah. Of course Lord, Palmer, Lord de Mayo's um, big house at Palmerston was burnt down um, during, the, during the, the Civil War. That's right. Because he was a senator and the anti-treatyites. Uh, there's, a, there's a fascinating report in the Leinster Leader in 1925 where Lord Mayo sought compensation for the burning of the, of the house. Mm. Um, it's, it's a verbatim report of the court case. It's fascinating stuff. And Mayo himself appeared. I mean, he made it plain, unlike a lot of people who were burnt out during the, during the War of Independence, the Civil War, that he wanted to rebuild Palmerstown. Mm. He wanted to live there. Mm. So he sought uh, and, and got uh, money from, from the new Irish state under the compensation things for, for, for rebuilding it. But it was formerly a house which had a, a sort of a mansard roof on it, but that was too expensive, so it was effectively a flat roof um, mm. that, was, that was put back on. Yeah. But uh, Mayo argues vigorously about why he wants to come back to Ireland and 
wants to live again where he grew up as a child. Um, and it's, it's quite, it's quite evocative stuff. Mm. It's sort of putting down a marker to say, I might be a Protestant, but I'm an Irishman as well. <laughs> so I want to live here. Um, so, so Dermot, the seven year old Mayo is, now his father was, um, he was the, the governor general, he was the viceroy of Vice India, of India yeah. and was assassinated by a, a madman in the Andaman Islands, I think. Um, yeah. So the, the history of the, of the family is, is quite exotic, but it shows you that they, 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 these, were, these were public servants, if you like. They had the, they had the money and they had the time to do it, but they contributed their own little bit to what they saw was an important part of their lives at the, at the time. And it's all memorialised inside in the church, that's the nice thing. Well, Lady Mayo was a great, she started the nursing, the voluntary health nursing, Lady Mayo. Did she? she? Was a, yes, she was a great person. Right, and would you have met her, Mabel? I can't remember now, mm. no, wouldn't it be? I'd have probably been very young, but yeah. like I know she had a lot to do with the nursing and started the voluntary nursing. Mm. They travelled around to old people and did a lot of okay. nursing for children and they were very good. Mm. And yeah. she started that now, that was Lady Mayo. There's, yeah, there's another memorial in, in the church and I've always been curious about it. It's erected to the Reverend Store Little Hales. And the Reverend Store Little Hales uh, was rector there and he died young mm -hmm. and he died if you read the memorial administering to people with um i'm not sure that it, it says the plague but certainly some pestilence or what have you yes. and i've often wondered what happened now this guy died before the church was built as far as i know he's actually buried in the graveyard but as well as that, when I was growing up, there was a, a field up in Hartwell. Um, I think it was Hartwell. It was yeah. called the hospital field. Yes. And I've often wondered, why was there a hospital field? But it, it was a hospital field. I know that corner yeah. of a hospital field. But it must have been at the time when there was a terrible outbreak. Yeah, well, maybe that's tied into the... the maybe line. it is. I don't know. I'd be very curious if mm. um, I could find out. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the first organist I can remember there is Mrs. Jackson. Now she uh, was a, a cousin of Richard Cunningham mm. and she lived just down the village. But she, you would be out of breath after the first verse, she'd do mm. Oh, and she was a great help singing mm. and playing and lovely. Great uh, help. We missed her, missed her very much, didn't we? Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, there was a Mrs. Vincent that lived in a house in the church grounds that used to blow the organ. Um, and they did it for years. Mm. Now ultimately, um, we had an organist, Miss Hickson, and between her and I think Mrs. Jackson and indeed Dorcas, I used to pump that organ. Now I can tell you, there's a little lump of lead on a twine that goes up and down depending on how full the bellows are. And you know, so if an organist does, that does all the notes, this thing goes, mm. you'd be, you be pumping away. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, so when the organ was um, in its last days, mm. the bellows were leaking. And it's like you, really, 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 really. <laughs> <laughs> you really had to keep going. Yes. Yeah. But in the olden days, when, when if you like when Mabel and I were going, the grass in front of the church was cut once a year for hay. Hay. Hey. That's right. And it was cut with a scythe. Yeah. And I can remember, um, now maybe um, Bobby Kelly doing it. Um, and I can remember that my father wouldn't have had too much money but he had the collection mm. and I think it was something like two pounds or three pounds that it cost to get it done. And he gave it to Bobby Kelly in coin. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Bobby got it <laughs> and he says, I won't blow away anyway. <laughs> 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 but those were in the days when, was this when Kill was a separate parish still? No, it was part of NACE at that stage. Right, so there we go. 
and there was a cure dealt with Caelan Rathmore. The man in Nace used to, the old, old man, what, the, Clover. Yeah, Canon Clover rode his bicycle out to kill. Did he? Yeah, now who in the, this day and age would ride a bicycle out in Dupra to do the service? <laughs> yeah. Mm. There you are. Like, Our sequel Clover. Yeah. 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 You were saying, Mabel, that it was Archdeacon Peacock at yeah. that time. Yeah. He was, old. he was the last director, wasn't yes. he? Yes, he was getting old too, like in the... Oh, Kill was a separate parish then. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. It was only in 1945 that we were combined with Nace. Was it 45? Yeah. 45. Yeah. During the war in that time. Yeah. Starting it. But the rectory is Killy, was Killeen House. It's a, is. It is across the jewel carriageway. I would always think of it as Peter Sweetman's or... Yeah, it was passed over to the... Sweetman's house. It over, yeah, Peter Sweetman. But it was the other side, a nice Georgian house. Mm -hmm. Again, if you look at the vestry minutes, mm -hmm. way back around uh, 1900, George Gillespie climbed up into the tower to stop the drip. Mm -hmm. You then go on and Richard Gillespie climbed up into the tower to stop the drip. <laughs> 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 and then our Ernest yeah. Lyons yeah. climbed up into the tower and the drip stopped. The <laughs> drip stopped. <laughs> yeah. Well, he would do daring things. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. The things he did. Yeah. It's yeah. a pity that we had, didn't interview him because he had a lot of knowledge about everything, the church, everything. Yeah. I think. Yeah. He took a great interest in Kiel, the church, trying to revive it at the time. Yeah. When he came back to Kiel, you know, sort of, Kill Church was, was as usual on its last legs. Mm. <laughs> and er, Ernest, you know, sort of came in like a, a storm and things had to be done. And uh, he was largely responsible for cleaning up the graveyard. Mm. And Ernest energised us and the tidy towns and proceeded in to uh, clear the graveyard. Now, my memory of Ernest clearing the graveyard was Ernest had a digger, and the digger was as old as Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sort of, the, the arm on the digger would swing like that, mm -hmm. and he had to, you know, sort of... Yeah. <laughs> it was like playing a video game. <laughs> That's right. And Richard O'Neill was there to mind him, mm -hmm. and oh, Richard was great. so yeah. calm and yeah. collected and what have you, and nothing had to happen, Richard would be there. That's right. But the fact that we can even see the tombstones, or the gray, the gravestones, is due to Ernie. There's never been any problem being um, a Protestant in Kiel. Mm. You know, sort of, I don't know about you, Mabel, but I've never been called names or any, even no, no. that sort and of thing. And I went to the Catholic school, and yeah. I never remember being, uh, like, having any trouble. I yeah. had friends. You know, sort of, it, it was a lovely place to grow up. Yeah. Now you were separate. You were different. Yes. But um, you were part of the community part as well. Of the community as well. You know, that's why a lot of Protestants sort of opted out of the, the new state in 1922. More than we recognise opted in, mainly through, I think, a sense of duty um, and, and a sense that they, they still wanted to be part of a place that they called home. Mm. But I went to the convent school and I never suffered any. I had great friends, have them to the day they died, some of them now, unfortunately, have passed away earlier than me, but like the Osbournes and all, a lot of people that I would have been very friendly with. Mm. It's, it, it, there was never any hint of hostility or anything. It, we were looked upon as curiosities <laughs> rather than as anything else. Yes. You know, they were checking how many fingers we had on our hands <laughs> and that sort of yeah. stuff, you know, and whether our feet were bigger than or smaller mm -hmm. than, than the norm. But it was that sort of curiosity. You know, and sort of, um, it's always been lovely. Well, I've letter from the nuns still, but all the nuns are gone, my old nuns, but they remembered me, she said, mm -hmm. well, from the head and the nuns at the moment. I had a letter from her, you know, during my birthday. Lovely. And they spoke about me, knowing me. Yes. Through hearing about me. <laughs> so I must have been all right in the school. You must I was the only one, there. I think, of the yeah. Protestant, I think, in the school at the time. But, you know, sort of, if, the, if you think about it, I can remember um, we've 
been involved in the Gymkhana for fundraising. We've had sales of work in the church grounds. Yeah. Um, we have had all priests show. Yeah. And we've even had a night of the dogs. <laughs> you know, again in aid of the church. Mm -hmm. I know I got into fierce trouble over this night of the dogs. Sure. I had two uncles clergymen. And one of them says, well, sure, you have to do what you have to do. And the other one told me that I'd nearly be damned in hell for it. So Good. The kill singers were right. helpful. They subscribed to us, didn't they, in a big way? Oh, yeah. And they were made up from some of our members. Uh, you know, there are, there are so few of us that if people like that weren't interested in using the church and so on, it would be a very desolate place. Mm. You know, basically, there are only three or four families that have been there a long time and would be involved in mm. keeping the church and so on. And without this sort of support, yeah. what well, should we be long gone? Mm. What a fascinating conversation about St. John's. I'm sure that there are many more stories to tell. Hopefully you've been given a flavour of the rich tapestry of the history of St. John's, a Christian site since early times in Kill County Kildare, the building, its people, the memorials, the community of which it is a part. A 200 year anniversary booklet detailing the history of the church will be available from September. To keep in touch, subscribe to our Facebook or YouTube channels. You'll find all the information on our website, naceunion.com. And may God bless you and thank you for watching. <laughs>